Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at Diana Shipping Inc, ticker symbol DSX. We'll be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Diana Shipping, covering its financial fundamentals as a business, and coming to a beginning understanding of how to think about the company financially. At the time of recording this video, Diana Shipping is trading for $5.44 per share. Year to date, they've done quite well in stark contrast to the rest of the market. They're up 40%. Going back one year, they're up about 9%, which is still doing well. Dating back three years, they've returned about 24% compounded annually, which is really great. Over five years, they've returned just under 8% compounded annually. And going back all the way to where we have data from 2005, Diana Shipping is actually down about 6% compounded annually, which just goes to show that there are prices that you can pay that are too high, especially in these industries that have high cyclicality and are prone to these boom and bust cycles like the shipping industry. If you had paid top dollar for Diana Shipping prior to the global financial crisis, you'd be hurting pretty badly right now. So the business is trading moderately between its 52-week high and low. Diana Shipping is a smaller business with a $417 million market cap. For some background about what they actually do, Diana Shipping Inc. provides shipping transportation services. The company transports a range of dry bulk cargoes, including commodities such as iron ore, coal, grain, and other materials via shipping routes worldwide. As of April of this year, it operated 35 dry bulk vessels. It also transports minor bulks, including steel products, cement, and fertilizers through its dry bulk vessels. The company was formerly known as Diana Shipping Investments Corp and changed its name to Diana Shipping in February of 2005. Diana Shipping Inc. was incorporated in 1999 and is based in Athens, Greece. So Diana Shipping is a Greek dry bulk carrier. With that background of what the business does and how its stock has performed, Let's get right into our analysis. We'll be performing a modified eight pillar analysis as popularized by Everything Money, taking a look at eight key financial metrics to get a holistic understanding of the business's finances. Starting off with pillar number one, we want their average five-year PE over the last five years to be below 22 and a half. So currently they're trading at just under six times earnings. Over the past five years, they've traded at this average of 157 times earnings. So that was very skewed for the very tail end of fourth quarter 2019, as well as the first quarter in 2020. So that doesn't quite do it justice. However, this business has been trading all over the board. This again shows the cyclicality and the potential unpredictability of the shipping industry. Definitely want to learn more about what happened to Diana during these years. But to start, that's an X on pillar number one. Pillar number two, we want their average five-year return on capital to be above 9%. When you purchase a stock, what you're really buying is a share in the underlying business. Over time, the returns that you're going to get on a stock are really what the underlying business returns, and this return on capital are going to be those business returns. Over this time period, it's bounced around, averaged out, it's pretty dismal. It's only about 2% return on capital, which is, you know, quite a bit under that 9% we were looking for. So that's another X on pillar number two. Pillar number three, we're looking for five-year revenue growth. They've been able to grow revenues from $162 million in 2017 to $214 million in 2021. So that's our first check there on pillar number three. Looking at pillar number four, we want to see five-year net income growth. So they had very negative net income in 2017. Again, very inconsistent here, although they did have profitable earnings last year, bringing in $57 million of net income. So that's going to be another check on pillar number four. Pillar number five, we want their shares outstanding to be decreasing. When you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is an underlying ownership percentage in that business. So over time, if a company is buying back shares, as we see here, as they've reduced their share count from 96 million to about 85 million shares outstanding, what this does is it increases your ownership percentage of the business. This is a way that companies can potentially profit from market mispricings as well as return capital to their shareholders. What this means is that if you're an existing shareholder of the business, your ownership percentage of the business and the percentage of profits that you're entitled to has now increased by the business buying back shares. So this is a really good sign to see and that's our third check in a row on pillar number five. Pillar number six, we're looking for five year free cash flow growth. Free cash flow is cash from operations minus capital expenditures. It can be used to pay dividends, buy back shares, pay down debt, reinvest in the business, or make acquisitions. 
So 2017 was a pretty rough year for Diana Shipping. We can see though that even though they've had this up and down fluctuating net income profile over the same time period, they've actually produced a positive free cash flow in four out of the five years. So that's a good sign there. This is a check on pillar number six. Averaged out over this time period, Diana Shipping produces about $21 million of free cash flow. So we'll use that number when we evaluate how they utilize leverage and then how their current market cap, where the business is trading in the stock market, compares to how they're generating free cash flows. Pillar number seven, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term cash equivalents to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by five. So as of the end of last year, Diana Shipping had $313 million of net debt. When we multiply their average five-year free cash flow of $21 million times five, that brings us only to $105 million. So pillar number seven is going to be an X. They're utilizing more debt in their business than we're necessarily comfortable with. Ultimately, it's the more highly levered businesses relative to their free cash flows that are more likely to do significantly worse during hard economic times. So that's an X on pillar number seven. Last but not least, the big pillar of them all, pillar number eight, we want their market cap to be below their average five-year free cash flow multiplied by 20. So currently, Diana Shipping has a market cap of $417 million. When we multiply their average five-year free cash flow of $21 million, that brings us to $420 million. So that is a check there on pillar number eight. That's about a $3 million margin of safety if you were to buy the entire business. So just because they check the box here doesn't necessarily mean that you should be going out and buying the business. This type of analysis is just a starting point. You wanna think about the company holistically and you ultimately wanna to come to your own independent, deeper understanding of the business. And that can only be done through more research into the company. The very last thing is taking a look at Diana Shipping's dividend profile. So they just started issuing a dividend which in some respects is similar to a lot of other maritime shipping companies. We've seen this huge increase in cargo and freight costs. So shipping costs have really gone up since the pandemic. And so a lot of these shipping companies have been actively returning capital to their shareholders. Diana is no different. Their dividend payout ratio relative to their cash flows is only 12.5%. So this dividend is easily supported. It's very healthy based on their current cash flows. Well, it's unclear if this dividend is going to continue into the future. It is a good thing that they're actively returning capital to shareholders, especially because they don't have above average returns on capital. So in summary, Diana Shipping Inc. checks the box on five out of eight pillars. Where the business's stock has traded has been all over the place. They earn below average returns on capital, but they've seen revenue growth, net income growth, and free cash flow growth. Plus, they're also buying back shares paying out a dividend, and returning that capital to shareholders. The business is more highly levered than we would want, but relative to its free cash flow profile, it looks like Diana Shipping is traded at about a fair valuation right now. So that's not investment advice. Remember, please do your own due diligence, and this type of analysis is merely a starting point. You ultimately want to learn the ins and outs of the business and everything you can about the shipping industry more generally. Again, the shipping industry seems to be near one of these boom type cycles where a large majority of shipping businesses have done quite well over the past year or two. Where they go from here, no one knows, but you need to have a deeper understanding to be comfortable investing into a business. That's it, That's it for our fundamental analysis of Diana Shipping Inc, ticker symbol DSX. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next. Thanks for learning about Diana shipping with me and have a great day.